Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome to our channel. We have the wonderful CourtneyDillon.com. You will find her information. We're talking to Courtney Dillon at <laughs> CourtneyDillon.com. <laughs> That's good enough. Awesome, but, but we're going to put a little place for a few seconds that you can see how to get in touch with her. And after we're finished, you're going to be convinced that, yes, she does healing, channeling, all sorts of stuff. Okay. Um, past life exploration, bunch of stuff. Do you yes. want to say anything to that? No, I think that's good. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. And we've got our lovely, my lovely boy, Eric, who loves this subject because he loves Norway. That's where his dad is from. What is his favorite? He's telling me it's his favorite, favorite place, actually. Yeah, it's very special. It really mm -hmm. is. All right. So I have a, a Norwegian uh, who has, uh, who has, uh, compiled a list of questions first mm -hmm. of all eric what is norway like for you uh well he says to me that it's like as close to heaven on earth as you can get yeah, yeah. there's something about and I've never been there, so he's, he's just telling me this. But there's something about the energy of Norway in particular that's very, um, what he refers to as interdimensional. Oh, like wow. it feels, yeah, it feels, he says interdimensional. It feels like, like a really higher vibration. It, the land feels, he calls it untouched. And in a way, you know, there's been yeah. development in that. But relatively untouched compared to the rest of the world yeah. and so that it, it it's really close to what you would experience that feeling in another dimension so that's interesting yeah you know, i feel like there's an innocence about it you know unspoiled innocent pure yeah it's reflects pure life on earth in a way that there's a few other places he's highlighting particularly yeah. iceland I, actually I say iceland yeah, I think you're getting that from him, but um, he's giving you messages, obviously, too. But he's showing me that there's just a few places in the world that are like this now, and Norway is one of them. So it's well, a good place. Iceland, like 90% of people believe in, I can't remember if it's either elves or leprechauns. So I'm sure those are interdimensional creatures. So I'm sure they probably do exist over there. Okay. Yes, yes, they do. Um you know, he shows me that the energies of Iceland and Norway, they're similar in a sense. They're very, they're different because they're representative of different interdimensional portals, which are at both places, but that they have some kind of untouched, pure energy. Okay. What do you think about the Norwegian people? Good and bad. As a, you know, as a ge in generalities, obviously. He says that the Norwegian people are generally good hearted. Of course, there are always exceptions to any, I mean, you know, look in the US, right? Yeah. Generally good hearted. He says more connected to the earth in general, more connected to the land and ancestors. Yeah. Ancestor, ancestry and the concept of ancestry is very important. Mm -hmm. Any negatives? <laughs> Stubbornness. Oh, you're talking about my husband. <laughs> yeah. As he's laughing as he says it. Yeah. Stubbornness. Well, um, he's I think he's talking about your husband. He's laughing. Unwillingness to admit he's wrong. Oh god, yes. Um yes. well that's like probably of a lot of Norwegians or a lot of people anyway. So yeah. He doesn't like to make necessarily generalizations about like, no 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 oh, but if he he's making a joke but it, okay. it may, there may be something to this idea of stubbornness because of like it's cold it's winter a long time you have to kind of like dig in and find your center you know that yeah. kind of yeah i love feeling it. so cozy and the northern yeah. lights are just magical i would really want to go after he's showing me all these images someday what is your best memory of norway eric um, he's showing me a couple of things. One, it's just like 
that feeling of just um, snow everywhere, like that, it, it's like so incredibly beautiful. He can't even, he's just showing me it's like heaven. Like you walk out and it, there's snow. Yeah. Yeah. He just completely covered. Everything's covered and it's glistening. Mm. Um, it's magical. He's also showing me, did you guys go ice skating? Uh, no, it's snowshoeing. It's oh, sure, sure. that's what it is. That's what it is. I'm like, what is yeah, this? Yeah. Said, okay. Okay. Sorry. I didn't know what it was. He's like walking through the snow on these things. And I'm like, is that ice skates? I can't figure <laughs> it out. Yeah. But that's, that's really fun. And it's like in this sort of untouched yes. winter wonderland. Like everything, it, there's nothing like unspoiled. Like nothing's been touched. And we um, cross country ski. Eric did a lot of cross country skiing. And he, he says he's pretty good. Yeah, he is. He really is. Yeah, he likes doing it. It's fun. But he's Why showing me these he's snowboarding. Mm -mm. He says you're terrible. <laughs> terrible. All right. I don't want to break a hip. Uh okay, no, so here's what my it. husband's comment on, you know, he's born and raised in Norway, and he feels like uh if you know there was something between Denmark and Norway back in the day where it, as luck would have it, Norway got the part that had oil. And mm -hmm. did, did not because of the North Sea, etc. And, and now they're such a rich country, and it's created the grave. Really, a lot of um, it's a um, I guess a social democracy. Um, they have a very like there's like a like a lot of people get services in a way that they don't in the U.S. Is yeah. what he's telling yeah. me. Yeah, it's a great place to raise children, and it's a great place to retire and die. Mm -hmm. They really do take good care of you. But uh, on the negative side, my husband says that they have become, uh, had this, uh, uh, some people have developed a sense of entitlement. And there's a jealousy mm -hmm. thing going on. If this person has a better car, then, well, I need a better car and stuff like that. But I don't know if that's true. I mean, he hasn't lived there. Well, what Eric long. is saying is that this is a world issue, <laughs> a world, like yeah. entire world. Yeah. He's not saying it's particular to the people of Norway, but he's saying that there's this sort of like materialistic culture that's pervasive in the world right now. Well, I think it's worse in America. Oh, like absolutely. America. That's why he's saying he's just talking about like, you know, this person is this car, this person is this. I know. And it's it's not also a mistake. And I didn't know why he was highlighting this yesterday because I was like, Eric, I don't know anything about Norway. Like you're going to have, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll figure it out. But like, anyway. He was highlighting this yesterday. This is not a mistake that this is on the winter solstice. He's telling me today that this topic we're, yeah. we're talking about it. I know this won't come out on the solstice, but the energies yeah. of the solstice are present today. And so when people mm -hmm. tune into this broadcast, they will, it's like, you can imagine he's saying tuning into the energy of Norway during the solstice. And it will be a really powerful, potent activation for people who are watching this. Yeah. That is cool. Well, I think my husband is probably referring to kind of distant relatives more than anything else, but I think they're lovely people. Uh, they're not as hard of the sleeve, bless your little heart, like Texans are, but they're very warm. And they come over to each other's houses, you know, to per coffee. And, you know, they, they just hang and they're really, and they're very athletic. They're much better in, you know, athletic shape, physical shape than we Fat Americans. Mm -hmm. All right. So back in history, here are some questions. Does a country have does a country have a soul or collective consciousness? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So are you able to co connect us with the Norwegian soul or consciousness? Yes, he is. Give me a second. Mm. This is interesting. It's like a, not like, it is a group that steps forward. Um, they are what looks like like native people, indigenous people to Norway. Um, it looks like even pre-Viking, like before, wow. like very, very, very old. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they represent the consciousness of Norway. It's a man that steps forward. Huh. What does he say? He says that he is 
that you can connect with the consciousness of Norway and receive a blessing today from this group. Mm. That he is here to assist the earth in the transition that they, that we find ourselves in, that you can connect with them in this time of darkness on the planet to assist you in remembering your own inner light. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's awesome. Can you tell us, Eric, how the country started? Well, the the earth was a big ball of... Uh, He's showing me like a ice um, shelf, like a shelf of ice. Mm -hmm. I've just got to translate this. Hold on. Like it's going back, yeah, like glaciers and things like that. And then it looks like there's this. Um, so he showed me this is like a long, long time ago. I'm not going to get the years correct. I'm sorry if I butcher oh, this, but long expert. Ago. A little yeah. bit. That's long. That's a long. Um, and then somewhere there's a period of this ice shelf. Then after this ice shelf, there are, it looks like pockets of of people who live and fish um there's like stone work or something okay like a stone cutting or stone work um and there's various animals that they're using and uh for skins um you know to stay warm but to also eat um this is sort of the origin point but a lot of this, this group of people, which is representative of this um, indigenous group that is stepping forward, um, are connected with star people. Really? But More yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. What comes like what comes? They're showing me that there's 13 original tribes, is, is what Eric is saying, mm-hmm. of people on the planet. And I don't think we're going to go into all of those. We can do a follow-up on some day on that, but he's showing me that this is one of the 13 original tribes and they're connected with somehow with ancient Lemuria Mm. and that there is uh, threads or ribbons kind of coming out from the epicenter of ancient Lemuria. And these groups sort of end up in different parts of the world and that they contain the knowledge and wisdom of ancient Lemuria. And then they're taking me to Lemuria and saying that these beings are, um, Andromedan. So they're, they're connected to the Andromedan people or star, star people, I guess. Fascinating. So. Love that. Um, anything else you want to tell about Norwegian history? Any parts that you like? Well, Eric is wearing a Viking hat. <laughs> yeah. Well, my husband thinks he's an ancient Viking. I'm sure he is. Your husband is an ancient Viking, actually. I I no, that's um and Eric was with him in that lifetime. Oh wow. There's he's showing me that he he has this big Viking hat and he's laughing to see, you know, he's joking around, but he's showing me this big like war ship. Um, wooden really intense worship that would that was viking that both you your husband you look like you're on it too elisa so um you guys travel together you know oh yeah yeah and many like lectures. a long ship yeah yeah it's really long i'm not the, the norwegian long ship it's actually a thing but was this used for raiding or for just being merchants peaceful trading um it looks raiding oh boy yeah i know this was it maybe one of like the night ne- well we've all done everything you know? oh we've all done everything i don't care right you're right right so oh, yeah no he says, ass raider, that's fine it just is what yeah. it is he says raiding um it wasn't peaceful merchant lifetime no um your husband was doing raiding too and he was actually this is what's interesting when i tune into the energy of your husband he has a lot of like leader oh yeah leader like Leader of the tribe, leader of the army, leader of the Viking. Yeah. About him. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, he was like the the captain. Yeah. He's like ESTJ and the Briggs Meyer, Mm -hmm. uh, which is the leader. That makes sense, actually. Yeah. 
that I'm seeing it. Yeah. Uh, does the dramatic and beautiful nature of Norway have something to teach us? I think it does. It is so beautiful there. That life is pure. That this pure energy we can connect to within ourselves. Mm. That's what it's teaching us. That life is meant to be um, unspoiled, pure, simple, and easy. It's not meant to be complicated and difficult and we are making it more difficult than it needs to be through our excessive need to own and buy so this is a good moment he's saying on the solstice it's so interesting how this just like happened you know on the solstice we can like connect with this energy go within and really like what do we need to take stock of this winter what can we be grateful for because it's this energy of gr- gratitude that's really powerful in, in, at this time of year, because we can look back. And even if your year was difficult, he's saying, because a lot of people are having a hard time right now. And we know that. Um, and even if your year was difficult, you can find something in which to offer a blessing yeah. This right now. There's you know? always something to be grateful for. Absolutely. Opening up your eyes and realizing that you, you're alive. That's one. Um, okay, so does the how does the nature impact the citizens themselves of Norway? Well, he says this isn't for everyone, but in general, the people of Norway are more connected with the natural world. It's more like part of their essence. Mm-hmm. It's part of their culture. It's they're part of in even the way that their ancestors, um, you know, really honored the natural world. Yeah. It's like sort of like ingrained within the culture, if that makes sense. Yeah, I see that. I definitely see that. So what happens to Norwegians if they live in a city? Do they and they kind of lose touch with nature? He says the same thing that can happen to anyone living within a city. But what he would even say, though, in about the cities there is they're more unspoiled in some ways than the cities, I guess, in the United States, he's making sort of a drawing a comparison Yeah, that for some reason he thinks that's easier for people in cities in Norway to still remain more connected with the natural world than we, we can do it here. We just have to work a little harder. Does that make sense? Yeah, a lot of them do have little cabins, uh, that vacation cabins in the mountains or by the coast, things like that. So, uh, yeah, a lot of them. And a lot of the, just even the middle class, and maybe not the super poor, but I don't know if there's that much, many who are poor. But at least they know a relative or whatever. They have some sort of base in nature, like most of them. Yeah, and he's saying that this will be a model For in Iceland and Norway, he's talking about, will be a model for future generations because as we, as systems are disintegrating on the planet and we're witnessing it right now, things are, you know, things are going away that need to go away. We'll have to look in, we'll have new ways of looking at things, new ways of doing things. And this system in Norway, it's not perfect. And so there's no, like, we're not putting it on a pedestal, but there are some things about it that are more, he says, egalitarian yes. and helpful for, and, and taking into account all people. And those type of systems will be what we build in the future. I kind of wish I'd raised all of my children in Norway, but kind of late for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. What was the Viking, uh, what was it like living in the Viking age? He says brutal, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Um, Y'all need to see the series Norseman. It's so funny because, well, it's just hilarious. And it's also in Norwegian, but these are actually Nor- Norwegian actors that have done it fully in Norwegian and also in, in English. And they use a lot of our current slang, but in a Norwegian accent, it's, it's really hilarious. Um, it was, it's not, wasn't it an easy culture? There was a lot of... Um, Survival of the fittest, he calls it. Generally. Yeah, they had this thing at, at this stoop where the old people, okay, y'all jump jump off this cliff. We don't have enough resources for you. So I mean, he says now we do this. He says we do the same thing in the United States. We just stick them in homes. Yeah, and that's true. It's not that much different. 
Yeah. Um, what was it, uh, what were the Vikings truly like? Uh, interesting, brutal, difficult. Um, but on the that those are the negatives. But he says like fierce leaders, warriors, courageous. So remember, everything has a positive and a negative, oh, right? Of course, yeah. Right. So there's like a fierceness. There's a courage. There is leadership. There's like um really there's like a, a directionality to it like you you decide which way you're going and you go that way so there's like all these qualities of the vikings that you actually you know and we can tune into any group of people and learn from them if we want and you can learn that from the vikings so okay so did they have a sense of family yes very much very, very much close to the family and how very sense close in it the community community well and he says that is the way we will return to this idea of community we cannot live separate separately we cannot do that it's not wise or normal we're yeah essentially pack animals and yeah. we will learn to be this way again especially in the harsh environment that they lived in harsh environment but we're gonna have a uh, reckoning he says in the united states even where we will feel the need to kind of come together in communities it's even happening in certain places yeah yeah good. Mm -hmm. all right so what do we have to learn from the vikings and while you answer that i'm going to get something that i want to show because then it'll be good for the next question okay he says that we have the ability to learn fierceness courage deciding our direction in life, one pointed direction. Okay. And there's a lot of like courage is a, the big theme here. Courage. Yeah. Okay. Can Eric connect with Norwegian folk music? And the reason I left is because this is Papa's Hardanga Fiddler. Mm. And Scout hates it. She gets really scared. Any spring in, she makes me. I don't know. It's it's I've done the feed. It's very old. Isn't that cool. Wow, that's beautiful. Actually, get a post. Wow, it. that's really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, um, gonna, I'm not gonna embarrass myself. He go. says, "Please." He says, "Please, mom, play a song." <laughs> no, I don't know how. <laughs> All right. Um, I know he's. I get on my banjo and start playing that, and embarrass myself. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh. Can you connect with Nor uh, Norwegian folk music and what folk music deeply, what's the message behind their? Um... The message he's saying is that we are all connected. We are all one. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the folk music is, I mean, there's like all different kinds of themes in, in Norwegian folk music he shows me. Um, and some are, but a, a lot of it is connection the time of harvest, um, community, the importance of family, these type of themes. And this is really resonant even in the culture right now, um, that family is a, continues to be an important concept, that community continues to be important, that nature continues yeah. to be important. Wow. You know, there's a band called the Hellbillies that is really great folk music that originated, I mean, they, they're from all this country and this city that's like 20 minutes away from our, our Rooney's home. Okay, so, uh, all right, let's stop there because the next half we're going to talk about modern ages. Okay. Really all right. I'm Thank you.